Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobe. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I'm down in Rodney, Ontario with Albert Tenuta, Almafra's plant pathologist. Albert, how's it going? Excellent. Thank you for coming down. Hey, now we're here at your nursery here, your tar spot nursery. A lot of talk about tar spot, that leaf disease that you've been oh, looking yeah. at for a couple of years. Now I want to go back to July. We came down here in July and we saw very little, you no, know, very low levels of tar spot. What do we see then and what are we seeing now? Oh yeah, no, from that first July 2nd where we only saw one or two lesions on the lower leaves, it started to move up. And when we were here last, we were starting to see the tar spot, you know, those beautiful little black stromas on those leaves starting to work their way up. But it's still, it was maybe at one, maybe 2% leaf area at that point. So very early in the disease development at that point. And now it really changed, right? Yeah, I mean, you've got a lot of obviously, you know, leaf disease here. You've got a lot of lodging here as well, Albert. Talk about, I guess, what type of impact the disease has had on this nursery. Yeah, no, this has probably been, you know, this has been the perfect storm for tar spot. And we've seen that in previous years in the US uh, where it's become, you know, pretty well endemic throughout the Midwest um, and the Great Lakes state since 2015. And so 2018, um, cool, moderate temperatures, wet conditions, and we've had the perfect environment here. And so that's allowed the tar spot development to continue right from that early July, right up to just, just a few weeks ago when things started shutting down really early. So we saw the disease progress up from that one to 2% up to 40, 50% of the leaf area on the ear leaf and above starting to, to, to be um, showing tar spot mm -hmm. symptoms on there, early shutdown, early yellowing, necrosis, the shutting down of those plants. And as you just mentioned, we're really starting to see that impact on lodging. And we did our lodging scores last week and you can see the big differences between the untreated, no fungicides or fungicides that aren't very effective compared to those fungicides that are in terms of the amount of stock breakage that we see on, on these parts or that traditional lodging where you see it falling over. Hey, talk about, I guess, the yield impact here. Oh, yeah. Obviously, I mean, it, it, it varies through this nursery because you've got, as I say, we're going to talk about some of the different pots, but what type of, you know, impact do you see? Yeah, I've been surprised this year. Considering that last year in this same location, we had maybe 5-10% um, tar spot in this area going into the winter. We didn't have a lot of residue and, you know, thinking, okay, we'll, we'll get some degree of the disease, but boy, did it just, it snowballed this year. And we had the perfect, as I said, the perfect environment for it. And that's gonna have a significant impact on yield. We're starting to hear yields from growers fields that had tar spot at lower levels than this, at you know, 20 bushels more. The adjacent fields here with um, our cooperator, our grower here, who's, who's fabulous if he's listening to this, I'll send it to him so he knows I'm saying nice things about him. But you know, it's you're seeing up to 20, 30, 40 bushel yield difference between fungicide and not. So it is a disease that we have to be concerned about, but ultimately the goal of this was to find out how we can, what tools do we have available and will they work for tar spot under our conditions? And this nursery is all about evaluating what's in the toolbox. And let's talk about that. First thing is genetics. You know, there is varying degrees, shall we say, of, of, of tolerance. Yeah, so there's no resistance that we have. So we don't have genetic resistance where it's either yes or no. We don't, we don't have that, we don't know about that. There's a lot we need to learn about this disease. We are, the companies are, everybody's looking at it as well. And so here we've got 64 different hybrids that we looked at. Dave Hooker and I went last week through the Ontario Ontario corn performance trials in Ridgetown. We're going to assess a couple other locations as well to get an idea of where we stand on, on the genetic side and this, this partial resistance or, or field tolerance that's out there. Unfortunately, what we've seen here and elsewhere, you know, we're looking at a pretty susceptible crop and we're probably looking at 75, 80% of those hybrids are, 
are on, more on the susceptible mm -hmm. side than on that, that tolerant or resistant side there. But we do have some good ones. Uh, again, it's a one-year type evaluation. We need to look at those. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, we're the goal here is to provide that information to the seed company so they can incorporate that into their other locations and their other assessments to see where we are yeah. and, and start targeting some of those those hybrids for those those higher risk areas. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a, an area that we need to look at and uh, and one for sure that that definitely needs improvement. I also want to talk about fungicides because part of this as well is evaluating fungicides. And you obviously, the same story here. You've got some, some ones that are not very good and yep. others high efficacious. Oh yeah, no, for sure. We've seen a big difference and we knew we would see that based on our cooperation with our tar spot working group out of the US. And, and so our trials that we've had here, as well as the trials we do with Northern Corn Leaf Blight and, and other trials that we do with our US colleagues through the support of the grain farmers of Ontario mm -hmm. and that, and, and thank you so much for that, is that we're, we're, we were ready to go this year. When, when it came to tar spot, and we've evaluated 16 different treatments through here. Many of those are associated with that regional uh, project or trial so that we not only include Ontario, but you know the Michigans, the Illinois, the Indianas, the Wisconsins, Iowas, and those into that. So we get a nice data set with different regional geographical differences and different environments. So we'll have a really good um, data set there, but we know there are those products, particularly when you're looking at those multi modes of action. So those two and three way um, products and, and the industry is moving that way, mm -hmm. moving away from those single modes of action, which you know you can see how effective they are with just yeah. this one right here. Um, and so we've got some good products there. We've got some that if you're going to put all your eggs in your basket on a, on a single mode of action type product, it's not going to be beneficial. But we do have some really good products that can provide us with that control level but again it depends on where we're at in terms of disease development and how much is there we were in a high disease development area here and these products will run out of gas yeah. down the road yeah. and the final thing i want to talk about is, is when you're combining those tools you've got some great examples here of some plots that obviously got your best fungicide and had the tolerant hybrids. That does make a difference. Yeah, and that's probably been the most successful part of this, this trial that we've had here is that by putting all those tools together and in terms of you know, high, a tolerant hybrid with those efficacious or those, those products that are good against tar spot, we were able to, to get us to, to you know, state, like even here where we're still we're starting to see you know it's later in the season we're going to be taking these off in the next few days or so but they're still standing um, the, the the cob differences are are pretty amazing between you know what we would see this is even on a tolerant hybrid with a fungicide that's not effective it's the same thing we would see with our susceptible check here compared to where we are with with that same hybrid and looking at a a, a good product mm -hmm. here you know, so we can, we can maintain yield, get it up there. The one thing I would have loved to do, and this is where we have to keep an eye on, it's important, important for everybody to be out there scouting. And even if you have applied a fungicide, don't give up. You've got to be back out there scouting to see how the disease is developing. Mm -hmm. The one thing I would have loved to have done in here is had a second application at those, you know, say three weeks after our initial application, just to slow that disease down again later on. Mm -hmm. So that's another area that, that we need to think about. So we do have the products, we do have the, the tools, mm -hmm. we just need to tweak them. And more information this winter, obviously, as you get results from your nursery sharing with growers. Absolutely. You know, the Ontario Ag Conference coming up January 5th and 6th. Please register for that. We'll be talking tar spot with, with Darcy Telenko from Purdue, Damon Smith from Wisconsin, and others. And you'll have all kinds of other uh, opportunities this winter from both myself and, and others talking about tar spot as well. Mm -hmm.